there's something powerful about speaking out the word with your own voice, your spirit. He hears your voice in the morning speaking things that will break habits. If you do it, you know what they say, 21 days. If you do it for 21 days, that old habit gets broken. And the new habit is I'm going to put him first because that's been the best investment I could ever make. Am I the only one that would be dead right now if you didn't get saved? Okay, so that means like that was the best investment because I wouldn't even be here. But then there's also the reactive prayers. So proactive is I get up and I say, I'm going to pray today. I'm going to, I'm going to ask you, what, what's your plan for me today? Like he said, say it, Sammy, say it. I want to have that switch on, right? And he, he was open enough to be listening. Really, Lord? Really? I could say that? Yeah, say it, Sammy. And then we would be disobedient if we didn't say it, right? So reactive is pray before you speak, and especially before you hit send on that angry email, which is all in caps. I can almost guarantee you 100 out of 100 times, give it the 24-hour rule, read it the next day, you're going to at least reword it and not have it in capitals. Right, because in that moment of that Italian temper coming up, uh-oh, yeah, watch out, right? Because then that's a forever record. <laughs> that email stays up there in the cloud forever, and they'll use it against you, won't they? Corporate America is slick. They'll bait you, bait you, bait you, bait you. Only takes you one time to take the bait, and now they have a record that you put it in writing. I want to be wise as a serpent, but gentle as a dove. That's scripture, right? I want to recognize if I'm in the world, I'm not of the world. And that I can prosper in the world, just like Daniel did, like so many people in the Bible that were put in difficult situations, but because they were aligned with the right kingdom, they prospered in the earthly kingdom. And I'm telling you, I've been doing this a long time, and there's not one thing the Lord tells you to do that if you do it, you won't succeed more in the business world. Even though in the short run, it looks like your boss asked you to do something. Oh, you know, it's just a little white lie. Really? Now there's shades of lying? Maybe if it's, honey, how do I look in this dress? <laughs> I want to stay married, Lord. Come on. <laughs> worldview. <laughs> this is really the big one. Because the worldview spits out answers out, out of your mouth that you don't always get a chance to think about. And you say what you believe, but you really do what you believe. It's easy to say you believe something, but it's really in your actions that it comes out about what you really believe. I won't go too deep on that, but just use that in the back of your mind that my worldview is going to dictate my output and what I really believe. This world's going to hell in a handbasket. Well, that's not going to give you a very optimistic look about life. And you're going to be like, today, Jesus, you coming back today? In case you didn't hear me yesterday, would you hurry up? Like, that's not very optimistic, is it? We're here. Let's make the best of it. We've got all these amazing tools that the Lord has given us. So the worldview could be, what do I believe is true? Which gate should I walk through, right? And this is that verse I already quoted, 2 Corinthians 10, 5. I highly recommend you memorize this because it comes back up in your spirit all the time. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. We could think about lots of cultural ways that this gets applied, but, the, but a very common one for young adults right now is, I'm going to live with my girlfriend, I'm going to live with my boyfriend before we get married, because, you know, you're supposed to try it out, right? I mean, even a pair of shoes, you try them out before you buy them, don't you? Like, really? Oh, you're marrying shoes, are you? Really? That's an argument in the culture that seems logical, but we cast that logical argument down because it's, first of all, it's not even true. You could talk to secular psychologists. They have statistics and studies on all of this stuff. The failure rate of marriages is higher for people who get married after they live together. It's a sacred covenant relationship. Amen? Just say amen. Some people are not smiling right now. <laughs> Every high thing that exalts itself. The knowledge of God says sexual relations is between a committed relationship between a man and a woman. Anything else outside those boundaries is a sin. Okay, I didn't write it. Well, which way do you lean? I'm standing on that promise right there. 
And every time I do another wedding, it, the Lord reinforces it to me even more how much of a sacred thing this is. I'm taking that argument and I'm casting it down and saying, no, your way is the right way. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity. Now, I don't expect you to leave here today. I hope it happens. One time I prayed for Cheryl Price. She said, I really have a hard time with numbers. I know you're in finance. Could you please just lay your hands on my head and make the numbers work better? I did, and it worked. <laughs> she said it. I don't, you know, she said, oh, my God, it makes sense to me now. So I hope from here that you go out of here and every thought you could take captive. But don't get discouraged if it doesn't happen. It still can happen. It might be progressive, right? But at least if we're thinking about it and it's one of our goals, we'll start catching ourselves. I think I mentioned that Trisha had a, a sermon a few years ago about fast from negative confessions. Oh, my God, is that hard to do? We found out how hard that was. How this, is, this is one of the ones on your hand out here, okay? What if I said this every day when I wake up? This is the day that you have made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. That's a positive confession. You're just quoting scripture. And you're saying to your spirit, man, and your soul, out of your mouth, your spirit's hearing your voice say, I'm making a choice. You made this day, Lord, and I'm going to rejoice in it. Let's say this one together. Today, I will invite your kingdom to come and your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let's do another one. Today, I choose to love you, Lord, with all my heart, soul, strength, and mind. I will love my neighbor as I love myself. I will treat other people the way I would want to be treated if I were in their shoes. What translation is that? Who's my neighbor? <laughs> That's a hard one, isn't it? Everybody's my neighbor. Yeah, I mean, I'm supposed to put myself in their shoes and then try to treat them that way. Man, that's an advanced course. That's what he said. You got room for a couple more? Yeah. All right. How about this one? Let's do it. I will not be conformed to this world, but I will be transformed by the renewing of my mind through the word of God, through the Holy Spirit, through worship. All the things that are redemptive for the kingdom are going to renew my mind away from the world. Come on, I will study to show myself approved by God, a workman who need not be ashamed. I will rightly divide the word of truth. I will discipline my body and keep it under control so I will not be disqualified. I will choose to enter the narrow gate that leads to life in every decision I make. Good deal. Class dismissed.